This is a video on how to set up the Cisco Mobility Express wireless access point. Now the unique feature about this access point is that it can act as a wireless LAN controller. So it has, it has a built-in wireless LAN controller that can support up to 25 other access points. So it's, it's ideally suited to small environments of 25 access points or less and obviously avoids having to buy a dedicated wireless LAN controller. Now it's very easy to set up. I've seen it done before. I've never actually done it myself. Um, I'm told it can be done in less than 10 minutes. So let's uh, see how we go. And I'm assuming that the 10 minutes includes unboxing as well. So here it is. It's a bit of a beast of an access point. It's quite heavy. Uh, but obviously you only need one of these in your environment. Uh, you can have uh, uh, more than one and have have them acting as a failover controller so if one were to go down there's another one on the environment that is uh, ready to uh, take over but the remainder of the access points don't need to be a mobility express uh, wireless access point there are a number of other access points within the Cisco range that are supported by this so you need just a minimum of one of, of these to get you started Okay, so first thing you do is plug it into a um, power over ethernet socket and let it boot up. It will then broadcast, once it's started up, it will broadcast um, a default SSID that we'll use to connect to to uh, continue with the remainder of the configuration. Okay, so once the access point has rebooted, it will start, the light on the access point will start flashing through a Christmas tree type pattern. So it'll go uh, red, amber, green, red, amber, green, and you know that you're ready to configure the access point. The first thing you need to do is connect to the provisioning SSID. And you'll notice there's a uh, SSID here called Cisco Air Provision. So let's connect to that. Okay, so we're connected. So now we need to launch our web browser and connect to the default IP address. Okay, now it's a wizard driven process and the first step is to create a admin user account. Let's step through our setup wizard. So I'm just going to call this system Cisco. I'm going to check my uh, locale information. And then I need to assign an IP address on my local LAN that I'm going to use to manage it once it's set up. next and then I've got to create my SSID so I'm just going to create a test WLAN and I'm going to use uh, just a pretty basic security level of WPA2 PSK could use WPA2 Enterprise if I had all the infrastructure that I need for that but let's keep it simple so I'm going to put in a pre-share key And I could go with a more advanced VLAN structure, but I'm going to uh, go with a pretty basic setup and just leave it uh, as default. So my users will be on the same VLAN that I'm using to manage the access point. So click next. And again, I'm just going to accept the faults and click next and apply. So I'll get a warning message telling me that the access point is going to reboot. And then we wait while it reboots. So the restarts do take a couple of minutes, which is chewing into my 10 minute time limit, but I'm pretty confident we're going to get well within the 10 minutes. OK, 
Okay, so the access point has now rebooted. Should be able to click on this link here and go straight to the web configuration. Obviously it's a self-signed certificate, so I need to accept that. And there you have it, I'm at the login page. So I'll log in with the username that I created earlier. And there you have the console. It's quite a neat little console actually. It's, uh, there's a lot of really good information here for network administrators. So summaries, um, obviously a number of access points, number of active clients, which type of radio they're connected to, uh, rogue APs, etc. cetera. Um, good breakdown of application usage, as you can see here. Uh, it's it's quite a quite a neat little management GUI. There's a lot of really handy information available here. I want to find out a little bit more about the clients on my network. I can just select one from the list of devices currently attached to the network, and you can see I've only got one at the moment. If I drill down on that, I can tell at a glance. All sorts of things about this device, how long it's been connected, uh, the protocol utilization, the general network utilization, as well as uh, specific information about the device down here, where it gives me a summary of the device and its capabilities. And often this information can be really difficult for a network administrator to uh, to ascertain. So you can see it's telling me here that this particular device is an 802.11ac device. I'm connected on the 5 gigahertz uh, band, which is good. Um, and this particular device, being an iPhone, only supports two spatial streams. So that sort of information, if you imagine that spread right across your network, where you can tell what type of devices you have on your network, uh, how many spatial streams they support that then enables you to make better decisions about how to build out the rest of your network so what sort of access points do you need to purchase moving forwards are you in fact buying access points with too much capability and therefore wasting your money so i think this gui is a fantastic tool for network administrators to have at their disposal now, I won't go through every individual feature one by one, um, but certainly just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to get up and running. So from here, I can start uh, adding access points to my network and start building out my network and uh, off you go. But as far as um, getting things started, I've been able to configure a, uh, a wireless LAN controller in under 10 minutes. Um, a particular access point it's running on, I've, I've got an 1832, it's um, a uh, 802.11ac 3x3 MIMO, so it should be pretty fast. So I think it's really, really good. So check it out.